Okay. Hi, everybody. I want to explain something uh, that comes up quite often in Bio 2, and um, this is very significant. This uh, rule, my Bio 2 rule, if you will. And it's important because we're going to use it now, and it's going to be important for quizzes and exams and practicums when I ask you things this way. Um, but what I want you to keep in mind is I'm going to explain this rule and it's important that you understand it because we're going to use the same rule many times throughout the semester. And if you don't understand the rule, um, we have trouble because, um, well, as you'll see, I'll keep repeating it as we go. So what kind of fruit is this as a start? It's an apple, right? Okay, so if I ask you this on a quiz or practicum and I show you an apple, you can't write down the word apple because um, there are, when we describe fruits, there are many different categories of fruits, mainly dependent on how they develop and uh, where the seeds are and various things like that. So I have a bunch of different kinds of fruit based on how they develop. So an apple, for example, is a type of poem. It's a fleshy fruit with the bulk of the flesh coming from an enlarged receptacle that grows around the ovary, the endocarp, around the seeds it is papery uh, and or leathery. An example of that would be apples. So if I ask you on a quiz, practicum, exam, and I have a fruit out, it looks like an apple, and I say, name the fruit. Apple gets you zero points. You don't get anything for knowing it's an apple. So that's an apple. What about a strawberry? Strawberry is what we call an aggregate. It's a fleshy fruit derived from single flower with several carpels. What about a bell pepper? A bell pepper is a type of true berry, fleshy fruit with a thin skin and pericarp, which is soft at maturity tomatoes, bell peppers, grapes, bananas, all those are true berries. Even a tomato, which a lot of people think is a fruit, um, but it's actually, I mean, tomato. Whoops. -da 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 -da. Tomato, a lot of people think is a vegetable, but it's a fruit. Anyway, that's what we're expecting you to do. Now, the next part of the rule is if you look, this is a big giant list of things. And to memorize the whole list uh, is very difficult, I would imagine. And in Bio 2, you got to learn a lot of stuff, as you know. But we have decided um, a long time ago that even for Bio 2, this is asking a little too much. So what happens is on a quiz or practicum or exam, we show you an apple and we say, name the fruit. And we're going to give you this sheet here. You're going to get this with the question, but it will not have the examples. So these will be missing. Okay. Those won't be there. It'll say the names like you see there. It'll have the descriptions. It'll have these category groups. Notice for strawberries, aggregate is the most uh, category wise is, is as narrow as you can get it. And that's true also for things that are multiples like pineapples. But we're going to give you this sheet. And so when you practice and when you learn and you're practicing learning the names of these, you can use the sheet, but not with the examples. Okay, does that make sense? So again, um, and I say this many, many times because we're gonna, we're gonna use the same rule several times, but I'm gonna have, for example, a bell pepper out and I'm gonna say, name the fruit. If you write down bell pepper or you pick that as your choice, you don't get any points, okay? You have to pick true berry or you have to write down true berry. You don't have to memorize the list because you're going to have the list in front of you, but you will not have the examples there. So it's not like you look at this and go, oh, that's a bell pepper. Let me find the word bell pepper there. No, 
you have to be able to identify that it's a bell pepper and then match that on this list, okay? Now, it's a little bit confusing because because people sometimes, they don't do well on this part um, in part because they think, well, I guess I don't have to study it because we're gonna have the sheet. No, you still need to study it, but you study it in a different way. You practice by having, uh, if you have note cards or however you do it, um, as you know, I like the note card method, um, but if you don't, you can pick another way, that's fine. But if I show you an apple or strawberry bell pepper, you can have this list out in front of you while you're practicing without the examples. So that way you can make sure you're able to pick it from the list. That's a good idea as you practice it. Um, when you're taking it on the exam or practicum or on a quiz though, if I have the apple out, I'm going to give you this whole sheet with everything on it except the examples. Okay. If that doesn't make sense, watch it again. Watch the video again. Ask me because we're going to do the same thing with insects, with birds, with fish, with mammals. And so you'll hear me say later on many times, it's just like the fruit. But if you didn't understand the fruit example, you end up not understanding all the other ones as well. So it's one of those critical moments where it's very important that you know the rule I'm trying to convey to you because you're gonna need that uh, as we go forward with um, the other things. Believe it or not, every semester I give the same speech, I go through it, I explain it even maybe three or four more times. And I give a practicum and I got an apple out and people write down apple. So it, it still happens. Uh, so we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, uh, just quickly, if you have not done so already, you might want to consider subscribing and turning on notifications. That way, when I send videos out like this or when I post them, you will know about it. Otherwise, I have to go into Canvas, I have to put the link in, or I have to email you. And every time I do that, it's like another 10 or 15 minutes for each one of these videos. And I'm gonna, at some point, I'm gonna stop posting them and doing them because it takes too long. It takes that extra 10 or 15 minutes, every one of these I do. So um, I suggest you subscribe, turn on your notifications. Um, that way you'll find out about it. I'm getting this information from my son who says, this is why you wanna do it. Just so you know, in case there's um, any point of me not being clear, I, I don't get paid by YouTube. I am not monetized. Um, I don't get any kind of royalties or anything from YouTube of any sort. I'm just trying to make sure that you get this information quickly. You can always, and I encourage you to do so at the end of the semester, you can unsubscribe. I use YouTube as a teaching platform, which is fantastic for, and I really like YouTube for that teaching opportunity. Once you're done with my class, uh, you can unsubscribe and then you don't have to know about that anymore. And I, I think that's a great idea. But anyway, consider that. And I hope everyone's having a good day. And I ta I'll talk with you soon.